padlock and key hypothesis or theory. When you say a, a, a lock is a padlock, and then a key is the key which is used to, to open the padlock. It, it, you cannot bring another key and then it opens that padlock. No way. That's why we are saying that these enzymes, they are specific in action. When, when, when it is acting on this type of food, it cannot act on the other type of food. So we are saying that it is using what you call key and lock hypothesis. So the, where the key enters from, that small hole where the key enters from, we call it an active site. Then the key which enters into the lock, yes, we call it a substrate. That is the food this enzyme is going to break down or is the food the enzyme is going to build up. So what happens, uh, we call this one, the enzyme has a particular shape. It has a specific shape, each enzyme. And then this substrate, the substrate, um, the substance on which enzyme work is called a substrate. So the food at, um, in which this enzyme is going to work on, then we call this uh, food, which we call it substrate. We don't call it food, we call it substrate in science. And then the active site, this is the part of enzyme to which the substrate uh, become attached. So this is where that small hole, that's what I've talked about, that small hole, so where the key is supposed to enter is what you call the active site. So basically, uh, that's what you need to know about enzyme. You need to know how to label that. And then how does it work? The lock and key hypothesis, you start with the enzyme. And then uh, on top, you have what you call the substrate. Yes? Now, this substrate is supposed to fit in this. If it is a different substrate, then it won't be able to fit. So this substrate comes and fit this one here, and then this one's there. And then what happens now, it, it fits in here. Yes, you see, it fits in here. The enzyme substrate uh, product complex. So it forms a complex. Yeah, it has not yet broken it down, but it forms uh, what you call a complex of enzyme and substrate. So now the key has entered, but it has not yet opened it. It has not yet opened the what? The lock. So what happens? So now the products are leaving the active site. It must open the lock and then uh, the, 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 the key must be removed from the what? From the lock. That's how the enzyme works. Then what happens? The products leave leaving uh, active site of the enzyme. So these are the products which leave the active site of the enzyme. After that, after being broken down here, then now they leave the enzyme. It means that now the products have been formed. What we wanted is you have this um, uh, substrate, yes, this food, it must be broken down, but it's gonna, we're gonna use this enzyme so that now these, subs, uh, these substrates can be broken down. So now we see that now they are done being broken down, now they are being freed, and then now this one is going to go back and it's gonna be used up. Sorry, it's gonna be used over and over and over again. You see that the enzyme did not change it remained the way it was. It was just to break down this, this um, uh, substrate. So basically, uh, this is trying to explain what's happening. A substrate fits into active site. It fits into active site, uh, forming uh, B, an uh, enzyme substrate complex. So it forms enzymes, enzyme substrate complex. And then a chemical reaction occurs um, and the substrate changes the shape. Then you see that D, the product form the enzyme can now react with uh, more of the substrate. So you're saying that the products, they form, and then the enzyme can now uh, react with more of the substrate. It means that it goes back and then reacts again over and over and over and over again. So that's how uh, this uh, works. We love this. We love to ask this. We really love to ask you that. Then you're saying that what are some of the factors which affect the rate of, of uh, the factors that affect uh, the enzyme action or the way how enzyme is supposed to work? Number one, temperature. We saw it that if you increase the temperature, it denatures the enzyme. It means that the enzyme changes the, the, the shape. An example here is uh, the eggs. You see when the eggs, when you, 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 you are going to fry them, when you put them on the frying pan, then it changes the shape. That is what called denaturation. It has changed the shape. And you cannot bring back the eggs the way they were. It has been uh, 
uh, permanently changed. That's how the enzyme is. And remember, eggs are made up of uh, a biggest percentage of it is, is what? Is protein. So it also affects the enzyme. Nature and the amount of substrate. Uh, the enzyme will work faster if the, um, the substrate is too much. It, it, will, it will work faster if the substrate is, is small, like small grains. The, the, the surface area is big. Then it means that you work faster than uh, when it is just a big substance. That's why when you are eating, you chew so that you break down those small, uh, those big particles into smaller particles, which can be acted upon by these enzymes very fast. So the nature, how it is, small pieces or big pieces, small pieces will be easier uh, to be acted upon by enzymes than big substances. And then if there are many, then it means that the enzyme is going to act upon them uh, very fast compared when they are few, because they are not easily be uh, uh, located. Then an another one is the amount of enzymes. If the enzymes are many, then it means that they, 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 the rate of reaction is also increased. But a time comes whereby even if you increase the, uh, the number of enzymes, still the rate remains what? Remains the same. Like low pH, uh, enzyme is going to be denatured and then the activity will what? Will stop. Optimum pH, the max, we will have the maximum enzyme activity. It means that that is the best pH uh, the enzyme it can work in. We call it optimum, optimum, optimum temperature, optimum pH. Yes, high pH uh, is is going to denature still the enzyme, and then the enzyme will what? Will stop or the activity will stop. So here is an example. This is an enzyme, uh, pepsin. This is amylase, and then this is trypsin. Pepsin works in acidic medium from 0 to 8 ne? pH. This is the pH, this is the activity. But you have find out that it is maximum when the pH is 2. If it is, uh, now it goes to alkaline or to neutral, then the, the activity stops, you see? So it means that uh, when the pH is uh, acidic, then pepsin is going to work. And its small optimum pH is 2. The pH is of two is the best pH for this pepsin to work. We find this in the stomach. And then you have uh, this one. It works in uh, neutral. We call it uh, amylase. Amylase works best in alkaline, sorry, in neutral medium uh, at a pH of seven. Yes. So below that, yes, it, it's going to slow it down until it reaches zero. And then above that pH, above seven, it's going to slow down until it reaches what? It reaches zero. So when you change the pH, it will affect the rate at which this enzyme works. Then you have the trypsin. Trypsin works in alkaline medium. And the, the, the best pH is uh, eight. So below that, it is going to make it to work slow. And then until it reaches zero, or above it is going to also uh, do the same. It's going to reach uh, a point whereby it cannot work uh, anymore. So that's how uh, is this graph, graph is supposed to be uh, interpreted. So best uh, pH is two, best pH is seven, best pH is eight uh, for those uh, enzymes. So what happens if the pH goes wrong? Here you have the enzyme, it works be best. So what, what is happening if you change the pH, for example, for this pepsin, and then you put eight, you put pepsin in eight, what will happen is gonna denature that enzyme. And then this one, the substrate, cannot fit snugly. The key, you have, you have destroyed the, the, the padlock. You have destroyed the lock. So it means that the key cannot enter um, it cannot enter, it cannot fit in the active site snugly. Then what happens, it means that uh, this substrate cannot act upon, no, the substrate cannot be acted upon by the enzyme. If you look at the shape here and the shape here, this shape is different. So it means that the reaction will not take place. That's why you see that it is by zero. And then the temperature is still the same. If it is low, it, is, it will be inactive. And then the rate at which this enzyme is working is going to be low because of the low energy. And then optimum temperature, that's the maximum activity to how it can take place. High temperature is going to denature the enzyme and then the act, action is going to stop. So it's, it's, it, it works best in optimum temperature and the optimum pH. Let's look at the graph of it. 
what happens at zero? The rate is very low, very low. But as you increase the temperature from zero, the rate increases. When you reach around uh, 35 to 37, wow, it is best. That's the optimum temperature. Now, if you start to increase, then the, the temperature is going to, uh, the, the rate at which this reaction is taking place is going to reduce until it reaches zero. When you reach 60, all the enzyme which is there has been denatured, and then the reaction cannot what? Cannot take place. So, this is what I was trying to explain that due to uh, here, inactive, uh, the, the, the enzyme is inactive, but when it reaches here, the enzyme is uh, maximum. Yes. And then uh, way above that, then the enzyme starts to drop. So you see that this is the kind of different kind of uh, enzyme from this. Because here, the optimum is, is around 37, and then here, the optimum is around uh, 41. So we have some enzymes um, which can work more. For example, those ones found in the in the in the thermobacteria like those ones which found in hot springs they can work in uh temperatures which are above normal so what happens when the high temperature is there you heat when you heat the enzyme the enzyme uh, shape will change when it changes then it means that still the the substrate cannot be acted upon and then it will live without uh, uh being uh, acted upon so it means that the action will stop completely if uh, you over uh, heat or if the temperature is above the optimum uh, temperature it keeps on reducing until when the the, the whole um, process cannot take place so basically uh, that's it and that is uh, enzymes in everyday life this one we are saying that where do you use enzymes in everyday life you find enzymes they are used in um, meat uh, tenderizing, uh, like the skins, removal of hair from the skin. Those shoes you you put on, they are nice. Sometimes uh, as a result of, they just remove the hair and then you look at a nice shoe, but you don't know that whether, whether it's, you don't know that it just came from an animal because they removed the what? The, 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 the hair from the skin. Then another one is, uh, is used in making bear, mango bear, wine, and vinegar. We're going to look at this one in grade uh, 11, that uh, how do they use um, these um, enzymes to make bear, to make wine, to make vinegar. Yes. Then um, another one is they are also used to make chocolate. Eh? Chocolate and, and syrups. They also used to make a washing powder. Actually, it's the enzymes which remove the stains in the, in, in the cloth. Yes, they are enzymes. They remove the what? Uh, the stains in the, in the cloth. I'm just trying to, to describe. Different enzymes are used. For example, the proteases, then it can remove the blood, eggs, and gravy. Um, then you have amylase. This one can remove starches. If, if, if the stain is starch stain, then to, to, amylase will be used in that regard. That's why you find that they have different colors. Yes, then lipase will remove the fats and glaze. So all of these enzymes are added in the washing powder so that uh, if is there any protein in the, in, in, in the cloth, it can be removed. Is there any um, uh, starch in the cloth, it can be removed. Is there any fat in the, in the cloth, yes, it can be removed.